Hi there everyone, Laurel here. In today's video, we're gonna go from some white cardstock to adding a little bit of color with some ink and fun embossing powders. And then by the time this video is done, you're gonna know how to create this beautiful vintage embossed Christmas card. So let's get to it. So this is a brand new stamp set from Katherine Pooler for the holidays. This is called Bows and Berries. And I'm gonna take just a couple of the images and kind of create a border along the top and bottom of my card. I've pulled out four colors of green ink and also two of the new embossing powders that is releasing as well. It's called Sage and Peppermint. So with this card, you can kind of go a couple different ways with it. If you don't want to do a bunch of embossing, you can simplify it by just using some of the colored inks like I did here in this card. And I think that's absolutely beautiful. I wanted to go kind of a different way and see if I could create some vintage embossing. And what I mean by that is, is almost like not complete embossing. I don't know, to make it look a little aged. You'll see where I'm going with this in just a minute. All right, so I'm starting off with the darkest of my colors of, of ink called spruce, and then I'm going to take the sage and kind of sprinkle it on to the inked images. These Catherine Puller inks do stay wet a little bit longer, so you are able to do heat embossing if you work quickly. I didn't want all of the images to have embossing powder on it, so I kind of made sure that uh, some of the areas of the leaf did not have any embossing powder. So when I'm done, the sage from the embossing powder is all sparkly and pretty, but then I also have that uh, spruce, that green ink shining through as well, which is why I am not using uh, embossing ink for this. The reason why I'm using colored ink is because I want some of that color to shine through. So here I am going on with a different green. I think this is Mardi Gras. Again, sprinkling on that same embossing powder and I'm knocking off, I'm kind of flicking it pretty hard from the back to knock off some of that embossing powder to make sure that the original ink color is going to shine through and then I'll give that a good embossed uh, with my heat gun and then move on to the next bit. I'm using this little sweeper thing. I think it's called a surface sweeper from Tonic or Nuvo. And uh, at first I thought it was so silly, but I use it all the time to get off bits of embossing powder. I clean my computer keyboard off. You know, I, I, I use it a lot, to be honest. I was surprised. All right, so I went in with that third color there. Same deal, you know what I'm doing. Sprinkled on some embossing powder and heat set it. So now I'm going in with the berries and I am going to go ahead and use the Wow embossing pad for this. I did not grab any of the red ink because I wanted to get just that beautiful peppermint embossed image, but not a complete solid image. So what you can't tell that I'm doing here is I am not pressing very hard when I am stamping those berries with that uh, embossing ink. I was very light handed, so it's not gonna get a complete solid image, which again is the look I'm going for because I wanted to try to do something vintagey with the embossing powders. So I, the, the deal is when you're using embossing ink, you kind of don't know where you, where you stamped it. So I was just kind of dumping the embossing powder all over just to see what would catch because I couldn't remember where I put it all. <laughs> so once I get that all heat embossed, again, it's not a solid, uh, image. So if you want a solid image, then obviously you want to get a lot of ink on your stamp and then press very firmly to make sure that all that ink goes into the paper and then your embossing powder will stick to it. But that's not what I wanted here, so that's not what I'm doing, right? All right, so here I am kind of filling in some of the empty spaces because once you get going and once you heat set, you can kind of see if there's any holes in the area uh, that maybe you didn't get the first time because when you're stamping clear on white, you can't see. It's like invisible. So it's always kind of a mystery of what you're going to get. <laughs> uh, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and dry this fully with my heat tool. Then I saw there was a couple little areas. Well, actually, just one little area. Nope, two areas. See, that needed more of those berries. So I'm doing the same thing over and over again. You're probably bored to tears, but not to worry. This video is almost over. So now I am left with this beautiful image. It's so hard to pick it up on camera, uh, but beautiful image. It's got sparkle from the various places that we put the embossing powder. It's just quite pretty. So now I'm gonna take the sentiment that comes in the stamp set, and I'm going to also ink that up with the uh, embossing ink. I am using the embossing ink from WOW. Now, when I do sentiments, I always do super fine. I can't impress that 
enough on you guys because sentiments are so detailed especially this one especially the tidings I wanted to make sure everything was going to be able to be picked up so super fine is the way I always go when it comes to sentiments just to make sure that you get that great coverage and every single detail of every curve of every script of every font comes through and that super fine uh, is the way to go. So here is a completed look at my first card. How y'all think I'm doing with the staging, right? I stepped up my photo staging game, my flat lay game. I did. Uh, so I, you know, had a great time making these cards. And this first one, if you want to simplify and go quicker and even mass produced and, you know, skip the heat embossing step and just do colored inks or something like that. Um, and you can grab your Misty or whatever uh, you use and you can just do like a little assembly line type thing and, and go to town. I think this is a very easy card to mass produce. So give it a try. Let me know if you do. Here are a couple of videos I thought you might want to check out if you have some free time. But thanks you guys so much for joining me today and I will be back with another video really soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.